Oh, these escalated. It did. The bling escalated. Swarovski crystals were calling my name. I had to. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Top of the Scott Nails, and this is the tutorial that we're doing today. It is orange calcite inspired. I hope that I'm pronouncing that correctly. And this is what it was originally supposed to be and look like. And I couldn't decide between shiny and matte. So if you think it should be shiny, leave that little bling emoji down below. Or I did a matte which I, I kind of like them both. I think the matte kind of, for some reason, makes it look more realistic. It's not really, it's like satiny in a way, but we'll call it matte. If you like it matte, leave that little flat shoe emoji, okay? Because that's the only thing. I typed in matte, nothing came up for emojis. Flat came up as a flat shoe. So we'll just do that. It's wacky, I know. And then it escalated tremendously. I sat here, ate some cereal, and decided it needed to be blingy. So if you think they should be blingy, put the little diamond emoji down below and we'll we'll see what everybody thinks. I can appreciate them all three ways, but you know, I hate to be sexist against myself, but I'm a woman and that bling is just beautiful. So this is the inspiration for this look. And I shared it on Instagram a few weeks ago. I did a little sample nail just to see if I could do it. And I had people vote between that and an updated rose quartz tutorial. And the majority said the um, orange calcite, calcite, calcite. Oh, that's how I'm pronouncing it. If I'm pronouncing it wrong, excuse my ignorance. You can correct me down below. So these are my little rough, ugly nails to start off with. I um, took off the marble nails. I actually was painting and got paint all over them. And they became a mess. I couldn't save them. I, I literally wanted to save them, like, so I could wear them in the future, like, as press-ons. But they were too far gone, and I was sad. But I ended up wearing them for, oh, almost three weeks. They wore very well. They were good. So my cuticles are crazy, and I have some lifting up underneath my nail. I can never, I know it is, I can never pronounce it, even as a professional nail tech on it, on it, nickel, on it, it, it's, it's like my mouth cannot do it. So it's because I, um, I hit my pinky nail and then it, it bent and it cracked. And I also was digging clean up under it. It's just, it's just, it's, it happens. So I'm being careful with it. I probably shouldn't put something as long as it, but you know, I take care of everybody else's nails better than I do my own. So I'm acknowledging y'all that it exists. So I'm doing, look at that cuticle. Oh my gosh. It was a lot to push back. So you see me literally push it back. It was a lot. Pushed it back. I used a skiver bit to get any remaining dead skin, which is the cuticle from off of the nail plate. And then I am using, this is the small barrel crosscut bit from Outwood Industries. And I'm using this just to kind of flake some more of it off just because it was kind of thick and coarse. So I'm using these cuticle nippers. They're super sharp and they're from Outwood Industries. They sent them to me a while ago and I really like them. And I'm just clipping that dead skin. I'm not clicking it. Cl clicking clipping my live skin or anything of that sort exclusively dead hanging skin there's a lot it's thick so it has to go we'd be like mm, 23 or 24 days trying to file that off <laughs> and um who has the time i'm trying to get to business so i was actually going to do this off camera but then I really looked and I was like, uh-uh, I got some crazy cuticles. Maybe y'all would like to see me handle it. And again, I'm, I'm overall doing it quickly and probably not as well as I would do on a client. But I need to get to like a reasonable point to be able to show y'all the artwork and it not to be a distraction or get in, way, in the way of what I was trying to do. So I just want to leave this 
clip in there so you guys can see just how crazy it was so while y'all are watching that let me talk to you about what's happening today in this video in this season of me doing these nails this one video of a season of me doing these nails it's a lengthy video as stated i go into detail showing you guys the technique i use it's very layered there's probably different points you could have stopped at um or points you could have skipped um it was some weeks since I did that little sample nail, and I'll show you later in the video, you'll see the little sample nail I did, or maybe you've seen it on Instagram. I couldn't remember everything I exactly used. And that's, of course, my fault for waiting so long um, to do it, but it's it's done. I think they turned out really well still, despite of that. I like my sample nail a little bit better than the ones I did on me. But like I said, nonetheless, I still think they came out well. And I'm going to, in this video, I'm going to show you guys them shiny, matte. I'm going to show you the bling. I'm going to talk about the color crystals I use. I use the unexpected color I didn't think I would ever get to use. So I'm excited to let you know what this um, color story is with the bling. And I really liked how that came out. But it really, it, I mean, all in all, it does take away from the detail and... Yeah, the fine detail that we put into making the crystal work, but I didn't care. I, I mean, I did these with a peel-off base, and you'll see that later in the video, so I plan on taking them off anyways, um, them to be temporary. So, yeah. Anyways, back to what's going on. So, we clipped everything, and I'm using a round bit, and you'll see me, I mention it often, that I'll use this bit both ways, and you'll actually see me use it today both ways in this video. So, I'm using it forward which is made for right hand and it's discrimin it is discrimination against left-handed people that forward is for right-handed people like left-handed people aren't backward anyways so then you see it now i'm going to reverse i mean i'm going from left to right so originally i'm going from right to left and now i'll put it in reverse and i'm going from left to right and that just kicks the skin off in both directions it allows you just to get a different angle on the nail a little bit better then i clean that off and my nails are prepped they don't look beautiful and amazing but they look better than they did and they're ready to do some cute nails okay so i'm using the extra long coffin and clear from daily charm their full nail covers and i'm going to be using the peel off base as mentioned just to make these temporary but usually this is what you would use and you can use code um, tabitha10 at daily charm to get any of these items from daily charm so you would use one, two, three, what I just showed you, if you want them to wear for a good amount of time. Um, as mentioned, I use that in my, if you see my little marble neon ombre tutorial. Um, those nails, like I said, almost lasted three weeks. There's no lifting or anything. I said I hit my pinky, but it still didn't really lift. It hurt, but it didn't lift. So I am just exclusively applying this rubber base and I'm going to hit it and cure it in the light. I'm getting as close to the skin as possible. Kind of almost tempted to touch it just to be able to get the lift just so it can lift off. If you want them to last, you never want to touch your live skin. So I actually was tempted at first to literally apply these with the peel off gel, the rubber or whatever. It's not rubber, the peel off base gel. And I decided that Maybe it would make them come off too easily. Easily, I wasn't sure. I haven't. I used this product once before, so I wasn't sure how secure it would make it or unsecure. Is that a word? It would make it. So I knew I was gonna have to file these at some point. So I didn't want to make them able to peel off too easily. So I'm using the extension gel. You can see how I'm doing this process. It's in my other videos. I apply it how. You apply like the Operate Gel X. It's very similar, not exactly the same thing. These nails do last. They're not super flimsy or anything like that. So if you're a DIY nail tech, not well, you wouldn't be a nail tech. If you're a nail enthusiast, I would definitely recommend them to you. So like I said, this is the inspiration. And it's an Hermes bag um, art piece. It's not an actual bag. I've seen it on a meme. Like, if Kim Kardashian hit her sister with that, it would have been crazy. Anyways, it's it's an art piece somebody did. They sculpted it to look like the bag. So, that's what that was. But I really liked how that stone looked. 
So these are the colors that I thought I was going to be using. And I kind of use them. Um, I use, I know I for sure use this one. I don't think I really use the first one. You'll see me try certain mixtures and then I wipe it off or I scrape it off and go with something else. But I know I need to be in this color range. And there's XOXO by Madam Glam, which I actually use a lot. And I realized I didn't get a clip of. So, yeah, I'll mention it a little later in the video. Some regular white nail polish. This is old. I had to add acetone to it. I know that's not the proper thing to do, but I did. Okay, let me tell you about my new amazing favorite thing. Is this silicone mat. It is... I would love it. You'll see it. Uh, the link to the description bar below. To my Amazon store. It's acetone resistant. Wipes clean. Everything I put on it so far hasn't stained. Definitely recommend very much so. So I decided that Vetro Gel I pulled up. I didn't really like this. It's old, years old. So I pulled out this set from Wildflowers Nails, their paint set. And they had these two colors that looked like they could go. I think I kind of use them both. And also they're white. And I'm using that Alpha brush. Um, it's a gel brush. It's their number six oval brush. And there will be a link down below. I really love their gel brushes. I haven't had a new one in a minute. And I just got... Um, purchased two more so i use that for this set and this is the poochie's nails liner brush i don't know if she still sells them i'm sorry i'll try to put the link below i'll try to remember to put the link below if she does but definitely check it out so i'm using that white gel that white art gel from poochie's nails not no 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 from wildflowers sorry my bad and um you can see i put some lines on the nails and then I'm blending it out but I'm only doing it one direction that's very important as a technique you can also use with the rose quartz or anything you're trying to add like that you know that veining that looks like it's kind of cracked and it's like white and it's kind of hard to imitate but this is a great way to try to imitate that not the only way but it makes it look like there's a sharp line where that is my air quotes that crack is i know it's not technically a crack um and then it fades off into the distance like away from you it's kind of hard to add that within the nails but we're going to try to do that and this is one technique to use so took that line faded it and then i decided to go back in and resharpen just the edge of that same exact line to make sure it's sharp and like i said we only want to blend it one way so now what I'm doing, I'm looking at the reference picture and you see there's sharper, more concentrated areas of white. So we want to make sure we add that. We're looking at different characteristics of this um, stone bag or whatever our reference picture is, whatever you're trying to do. I always recommend look at an actual picture of it. It's made out of stone. I really like that piece and cut of it. So I keep the picture nearby on my iPad just to refer to and decide what I need to do. And honestly, I mentioned before I did a lot and some stuff you'll probably be like, oh, it's kind of pointless. You layer different things on it. And um, it's, I, I wouldn't say that because we need to add a lot of depth and different characteristics to this to make it look real so i'm trying to add this veining right here that you see so in between those first lines i did and i like to call those the main veins are they called that i don't know but for reference we'll do that they're the big deeper veins that we're trying to add that depth to and make it look like it's deep down in the nail and it goes away from us so in between those deep main veins there's these other sections as you've seen, I showed you in that picture that run kind of in between them, kind of crossing in between those two in that section. And you'll see also, I didn't mention that section that I feathered out the white, but you see I kind of filled up like certain sections with that faded white. So it's a little more opaque. It's still sheer, but it's kind of a little more opaque with white. And I put a very thin layer of color I mixed up on the nail first and then I added those little cross veins as you've seen with that fine brush then I mix up this color and I hated it so I wiped it off before I cured it I scraped it off 
And that's why I love this matte. And then you can literally wipe it clean. But I mixed up that color. I didn't like it for what I was trying to achieve here. So I'm using, I'm not literally using, okay, I'm not going to lie to y'all. I'm not using XOXO by Madame Glam, but this color is very, very similar. So if you want a color that's similar, it's XOXO, but the color I'm literally using is different. So yeah. So I took the color, I mixed up another color back there. And it's a little more sheer. And I'm adding it to pick up certain colors and depths and concentrations of colors that that stone shows. And then I'm blending it out. I'm going to call it for the sake of what we're doing. I'm going to call it that XOXO color, which is like a sheer kind of brown tone color. Okay. All right. So I'm mixing together color. And this is going to be those darker, more or deeper terracotta reddish pinkish looking spots so i mix in various colors that we showed i don't know exactly but it's one of those ones i showed you in the beginning the more redder toned ones that one from wildflowers um a little bit of clear because we want to keep it sheer we everything i probably mix over there is going to have sheer or that daily charm milky white or a combination of the two because we want to add depth we want things to look layered and in the background and deep in there and different elements and like it's 3d like these nails are built with the stone it's a half inch thick of just orange calcite you know that's what we're trying to do so i added that color in between those lines we drew earlier again i'm always referring back to that picture so we have our main veins and then we have those secondary ones we drew in like a opposite direction we put that kind of reddish orange color on there and I added a little more pink to it trying to get a little more terracotta reddish pinkish color that um, wildflowers one and so then I'm always almost every single thing I do almost every time I'm going in and redrawing my main veins just to layer them and I kind of move it and it's probably hard to tell it probably seems insignificant but I move it over a little, just the tiniest bit or I try to every time so and you'll see me I kind of like push it out with my brush because I'll forget so when I blend it out I'll kind of push the line away a little bit just to add that dimension just to again make it look like it's set back in there and we'll just do layers and layers of our main veins just to again add that depth to make it look like it's that correct type look again I know it's not but if I don't have any better words I'm not a crystal gemstone ologist or nothing so we add that and i'm also curing in between all these layers so i want to show you all this matte i scraped it off my color and i just sprayed some alcohol and wiped it so now we're adding a little more micro detail in the stone of that smaller almost insignificant looking veining but it does matter it's going to make a difference you'll see so i took that white nail polish and i'm just taking some acetone and spreading out and I don't want any concentration of this white. And so it would have been much easier again if I had a fresh white regular polish. It is old and I need it to work. Oh, that's what I need. Y'all, that just reminded me of what I need to get from Amazon. I need I was sitting here thinking like, man, I need to get two things from Amazon. I could not remember the other one, and that's it. So, anyways, <laughs> um, so I'm just spreading that out and it's regular nail polish, and because we're using acetone. It dries almost instantly, so I'm going in again with that sheer color, XOXO color, that sheer brown color, and putting a layer over the nail, then go ahead and curing it. Again, we're setting everything in between layers to add depth. And we're also going to be using Blooming Gel at some point, not right now, but I wanted to show it while I remembered. So I took some white gel polish and I mixed a little bit of, again, of that sheer brown color in there. And we're adding the finest little details. And I don't even want it too thick. You see me like literally cleaning some of that line off because it got a little too thick. We're keeping it very fine, very, and it's, it's very haphazard. I'm kind of following some of the lines or going in between the lines that I left with the white nail polish that we just did. And it's just to add different character to the stone you see how it's coming together if you catch a moment of it looking um you catch it kind of still 
and we're just adding that detail and it is tedious and if you're a nail technician and you're wanting to do this to this level you could do this get something similar looking a little bit simpler more simple <laughs> but if you're doing this please charge more for it if they want this kind of detail with a marble it does take time so then i'm taking that dipped in honey which is like a sheer yellowish orangish color mixing that with a little more clear um more regular nail polish and kind of adding that in areas just randomly in between certain veins not where that orange that terracotta reddish pinkish color is but in other areas just to add concentration just to add that depth again looking at that picture and i hope you can tell what that did for the look and then almost every time i'm going over it with that sheer brown color again i'm going to call it xoxo madam glam and then i'm looking at my you see my little sample nail that i did a few weeks ago because i really liked what i did there but again, I'm still looking at the actual picture because that's most important. To make it look real, you need to look at the real thing. So I went in with another layer of the regular nail polish and I'm dispersing it out with um, acetone. Like I said, that dries almost instantly. So then I'm applying the Blooming Gel Polish. You can apply from, you can get any brand almost though actually works as a blooming gel polish the gel bottle ink makes one madam glam makes one wildflowers nails makes one so many make them so i'm putting that down first i'm not curing it and then i am adding those white details those concentrations of white that we set out earlier but i'm not going as far out as, as i did again just to add depth and then I'm going over my main veins again, but I'm moving over just a little bit so it's not precisely on it. So we can check, we can see that depth. So again, I'm going around the edge with that white, kind of fanning it out. Make sure you let it kind of sit because the more something sits in the blossom gel, the more it will disperse out. So kind of monitor like how many nails you want to do at once because you probably want to cure like do one nail at a time because if you do a nail and you let it sit it might disperse the color too much so just keep that in mind so again i'm going over these veins but again not directly 100 percent over i'm just moving it over just a little bit and these are our main veins we started with and i hope you can see the depth that we added here so next i applied another bit of blooming gel polish because i want to add a little more detail so i actually cured it add a little bit more then i'm adding areas that were concentrations of white you see i just added a little bit of white in the middle of it just to pick up those white highlights that i seen in the picture of the actual stone so finally we are going to with my air quotes encapsulate i'm using the clear rubber top coat very thick thick gel again it's almost like we're encapsulating on the nail um, if I was to do this for real, like on myself, I would have cleaned up at the cuticle area and um, thinned that out before I got into any of this, before I started doing the design at all. I didn't. Again, these are supposed to be temporary. So once I encapsulated or protected the design, because there's different textures, we did different layers of stuff on here. We want to make sure it's smooth. And then that just adds a little more depth at the end of it also. So this is why I want to make sure that it was secure. I want it to be able to come off easy with the peel off gel, but I didn't want it to be so temporary that when I filed it, it would come off because I knew that I would have to encapsulate this design and I was going to have to regain my shape back. So, and I do want to mention you could do this in a traditional way with traditional extensions. Um, you could attempt to do it with acrylic, um, or also with builder gel, and, or you could even do it like this. These nail tips are pretty thin, not weak. I wouldn't misconstrue that. I feel comfortable wearing them by themselves, but they're fairly thin. So they really take this product very well. The only issue was I should have tapered in around the cuticle area if I was going to wear these for real, for serious. <laughs> so I filed them. Um, got the shape together, buffed them, and then I'm going to top cut them 
top coat them with the extreme shiny top coat from gel bottle ink and you can very much stop here but this video does go on don't click away we're still going i have more to show you come back no don't go come back we still got more video so i am top coating these with the shiny i lived with that for a couple minutes and i really liked it you can see so much of the detail so much of the depth that we did and added but i i did appreciate it matt as well it's kind of hard for me to decide so i know i wanted to show them to you guys both ways matt and shiny so um after i did this i actually would like to say this and this is not a hit at ugly duckling but i use their matte top coat because i feel like they when they're like in their natural state they're not shiny per se or matte per se i feel like they come across as a little bit of a satiny look like in between matte and shiny so that's what you'll see me use so this could be our final look if you want to stop there, you want it to be an accent nail, whatever you're trying to do, you can change the colors up on these. Just use this idea, concept, technique. It could definitely work for different colors. You can add in gold, flakes, holographic pieces, iridescent pieces. It could run the gamut. So this is not it, but this is them shiny. I just obviously wanted to put a lot of live long clips of me showing you them shiny. Just wanted to see those details. So this is the Ugly Duckling Matte Top Coat. I'm going to be honest, guys. Like I said, it's not, you know, for this purpose. This is why I keep it around because I was like, man, there's certain instances where like a more satiny top coat would be better opposed to like a completely flat matte. And it, I think it did well for this concept. Um, but as stated, I don't honestly no some people are like oh it's the best matte top coat and i do not understand why it still leaves a little shine you can see the surface of it i think it looks really cute matte a little nah, i'm gonna call it matte but i think it looks a little more realistic but also at the same time takes away some of those fine fine details but i don't know i kind of like it more but then i like it less i don't know tell me tell me down below again what you think put the little flat little flat heel shoe if you like it matte flat matte so then like i said it was real at night i was sitting there eating my cereals and i was like man i would love to put some bling on them and i couldn't sleep so i'm back in my office testing out bling so i had all these different colors i pulled trying to see what i thought was best and so i have dusty pink chalk white ab white opal um peach silk crystal moonlight and um crystal shimmer those are the ones i pulled that you'll see if you want to go back to the earlier clip and then i ended up i'll tell you which ones i decided so i had to draw a diagram because you see my inspiration picture that was from helen um you'll you'll see it. helen nails helen yg nails so that's my inspiration i decided i want to do it on all of them well the thumb i did something else it didn't matter so I didn't want them to look too similar, so I kind of drew out. I didn't want to overtake the white spot to him. It probably didn't even seem that serious that I needed to draw it out. But I did. I didn't want to cover up my little white spots. I didn't want them to all look the same. So I kind of need to know, do I need to start at the top left? Do I need to do the curve? Like some of them curve to like the opposite side and some of them curve to like the same side. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. So I end up using the dusty pink oh it's a dusty pink delight i think i said a b it's dusty pink delight and i never thought i'd have a use for that it's kind of ugly but it's kind of cute but it worked perfect it's my favorite stone in the situation so i use dusty pink a b i use crystal moonlight i used silk and then i used peach and they're all swarovski crystals and you can get them from bluestreakcrystals.com use code tab the five so you see i put that crystal gel and i was i said that weird that crystal gel and i drew like i put it base where i thought i was gonna put the whole design but i didn't want it to move on me so i wiped off the rest of it because i didn't want it to cure when i did my little uv little light on it because i wanted to get that first little chunk locked in and so i wiped it off like i said i didn't want to accidentally cure a chunk of it without adding crystals 
got that cured and then I added my little piece of crystals at the bottom and I'm just going around the edge with these beads and the beads are from Daily Charm I say you can use code Tabitha the number 10 and I'll go around the perimeter of the stones and then I put a little bit in the midst of the stones you can see like in between the stones and then I kind of make it where I made it where it ended at a point again this is I didn't make this design up and then I did a strip of that, um, of a crystal gel, and you can use um, the one from Daily Charm. Then I laid out those beads, cured that, and then I'm going in with a shiny top coat. At this point, I felt like it had to be shiny. I know I know we all like matte with the bling. It's my favorite thing. But just just to not lose the detail, because a little bit of it get, does get lost with it being matte. So the bling is so extra. And everything, I felt like it was already a lot. It took away from the, some of the detail of the stone. So I didn't want to lose any more with it being matte. But it, I'm sure it would look cute. But that's why I did it. So all in all, this is it, you guys. I really appreciate you for watching. This was a labor of love. So please, thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Comment down below. Tell me which stone you'd like to see next i want to do a little series of different gemstones or um crystals and yeah i really i really like them i mean i'm not original with that idea but if you'd like to see me do them tell me which ones you'd like to see down below all right all right and uh, don't forget to check the description bar for any links or anything you need or that you're looking for discount codes and etc and yeah you guys subscribe thumbs up turn on the bell so you know when i upload i'm uploading more and yeah thank you for watching bye